B2B Cambodia, the portal for business news in Cambodia. Eurocham Cambodia organized its 2024 HR Forum on April 25th at the Oakwood Premier Phnom Penh, bringing together private sector stakeholders and government representatives to discuss topics related to human resource development in Cambodia. This was the second time Eurocham Cambodia hosted its flagship HR Forum, with the Minister of Labor and Vocational Training, His Excellency Heng Soor, delivering the keynote opening remarks. Since the conclusions of the private government govern private forums, Ministry of Labor also has been tasked and also agree with the private sector to take out many uh, public service that consider as hindrance to the business environment. So we will offer you more flexibilities, more responsibility to your staff, to your employees. And it, it is also a good opportunity for our employees, for our workers, especially their representative, to work more closely with the enterprise rather than count on the labor inspectors who are not always within enterprise. Today's forum is going to highlight the importance of good HR practices in fostering sustainable and successful organizations. This year, we have lined up a great array of speakers to cover a wide range of topics relevant to HR managers. We had a chance to speak with Faya Hayati, senior economist at the World Bank, about his presentation on Cambodia's economic progress and the role of human capital. Yeah, so the human capital story in Cambodia has really two sides to it. One is, again, this narrative of progress, right? We see enrollment rates in Cambodia for upper secondary increase by 77% from, you know, 19% to 30% of the population now goes to upper secondary. Primary school, same thing, from 80% of kids to now 90% are now enrolling. So you see this progress. But at the same time, we're starting from bases that are not comparable to our peers, right? So you go to places like Vietnam and 90% of those children are enrolling in high school. Whereas in Cambodia, it's about 30 to 40% are enrolling in high school. So on a comparative sense, we have a lot more to catch up on. And it's not just in uh, enrollment rates. We also see it in quality. The PISA scores were just published for Cambodia. And it, it shows that our when you compare us to our comparators, we are still quite significantly below. And, you know, the World Bank has this composite index, which we call the Human Capital Index. And it is this hybrid of how our systems of education are and the and on um, health outcomes. And for us, our score is 49%. So what that tells you, a child born today in Cambodia is only likely to achieve 49% of their productive ability because of the quality of education and nutrition and health outcomes that prevail in Cambodia today. You know, realism is a tough one to put into it because the situation in Cambodia, if you look back 50 years, 30 years, none of its results were predictable or realistic, to be honest, 40 years ago, yet it achieved them. And so looking forward, the challenge is just as great, right? For us to achieve high income by 2050 requires the same sort of remarkable growth we had for 30 years for another 30 years. And that's seldom been done by anyone on the planet for 60 years to have sustained growth. And so it takes a lot of structural reforms to raise the human capital, raise productivity, draw in foreign direct investment, and then sectoral policies too to help how do we become a more, rise up the value chain in manufacturing? How does our agriculture do more value added and not just raw agriculture? And then services, how do we take advantage and digitize? So there's a series of reforms that would need to be done to pull off another 30-year record sort of growth period. We also spoke with Andreas van Straten, Services Coordinator at Eurocham Cambodia, who presented on the results of a survey conducted by Eurocham and Swiss Contact, addressing Cambodia's prevailing skills gap. So leadership was the most prominent skill among all these five sectors. 
And then apart from leadership, it was also knowledge of quality control and also customer service and also having a look at uh, project management. However, when we started to push it into very sector specific skills and started to look at what they wanted, we still saw soft skills were at the top, but then we started to see a bit more hard skills and a bit more industry specific skills. So just to give an example for construction, uh, construction saw um, the importance of project management and also leadership management, but they also also saw the need to understand a very uh, united understanding of construction techniques. The two speakers also explained how they think the private and public sectors can work together to address the skills gap and further develop the quality of Cambodia's education. So from Eurochamp's perspective, um, one thing we're trying to do now with our training academy is to see how we can work with the skills development funds to have a co-financed training. So in this sense, even though um, our, Eurochamp will be sh shouldering some costs, we would be able to um, uh, train more people, we'd be able to give a high quality level of education because, you know, on our side, we need to consider the cost of venue, the cost of equipment, cost of trainer. But then if we get a subsidy, we're able to offer our same level or same quality of training for a cheaper cost. And that should be able to make it a bit more affordable and a bit more appealing. Any growth projection, growth outlook relies on a functioning, healthy, competitive, productive private sector. And so to the extent that the public sector can support that through innovations in processes and supporting them with reducing costs, transactional costs, energy costs, these are all ways that they can together uh, have a symbiotic relationship to thrust Cambodia into a future with high growth and uh, well-being for everybody.